Become aware of your own frame and become aware of your frame growing up. Did you feel safe in your parents' frame or did you not feel safe in your parents' frame? Did you feel safe in your own frame or did you not? And did it feel more safe for you to become part of someone else's? Welcome back to another episode on Into the Vortex with Aaron Dowdy Podcast. My name is Aaron Dowdy, and in this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of my own shadow when it comes to me understanding more about what is called frame control or having a magnetic frame. Now, frame is like the belief system we have about who we are. It's realizing that What we feel about ourselves is projected out and other people are responding to us in that way. And what I realized is I had some very strong epiphanies about me feeling safe in my own frame or not feeling safe in my own frame and then attracting either women into my life or relationships into my life where I felt safe being with and in someone else's frame as well. That's been recreated in many of my ex-girlfriends. This has been something that's been a huge epiphany for me. And as I've done the shadow work on this, not only has my own energy become more magnetic, but um, I'm able to see these patterns and then able to choose from awareness what do I really want to prefer to experience. So, uh, you know, a lot of having magnetic energy has to do with non-attachment, being yourself the real authentic you that doesn't care what other people think. And in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my own shadow work journey of learning about this. If there's one thing that I could say I really learned in 2020, it was about my shadow and it was specifically about my shadow with my own frame. And as I become more comfortable with my own frame, you know, it's very symbolic. I bought a house in Sedona that I'm uh, my own house that I'm going to be moving into. I'm having remodeled right now. I move in the next like three weeks, which I'm so excited about, but it's very symbolic and a metaphor for me moving into my own frame in life. And I'm so excited to actually do that. And, um, and also I'm, I'm seeing how it trickles out into my relationships, my love life, everything, because I'm being myself and I'm not uh, the old shadow side of it, like seeking or wanting validation. And as I'm being myself more unapologetically, it's been very powerful. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you those big takeaways. I'm going to share with you exactly how you can uh, step into that yourself, how you can do the self identity work, the self image work to have your own strong frame, but also not needing to control the frame out of fear. A lot of times control is related to fear because it means we don't trust the unknown. I'm going to show you to balance both sides of the coin in this episode. And before we get into this episode, I just want to shout out to one of the podcast sponsors. If you want to also support the podcast, this is a way of doing that. Um, I'm a huge, this is something I'm actually really passionate about. I've used it for about a year, year and a half now. And it's supplements. It's high vibrational supplements that I use. One of the most important things I think for something to retain the high vibrancy is if something is organic. And if it's organic, then it's really connected to the whole foods. It's really connected to the phytonutrients and everything that's inside of it. And many of you know, I don't use caffeine. Um, I talk about it a lot. I don't use caffeine. I don't smoke weed. I don't use, you know, I don't, um, I, I just, I, there's thir- certain things I do for energy that keeps me in a high vibe. And one of them is Organifi green juice. All you do is you get one scoop of this stuff out of a, it's a powder. You get one scoop, you mix it with water, you mix it up and you drink it. And that's what gives me my energy every day. I'm getting ready right now. I'm actually fasted right now, but right after this, I'm going to go get some and I'm going to drink it. I drink it every single day. What makes it great is there's less than three grams of sugar per serving. And it's an essential superfood with clinical dose of what is called ashwagandha. Ashwagandha helps reduce stress and support healthy cortisol levels. I find that I'm very busy, so that's one way of me managing stress. And it's uh, easy to use by simply mixing it in water with your favorite beverage or on the go. I tend to use the Organifi Green in the morning, and uh, it helps me with energy, helps me with stress. Also, is a way of getting a whole bunch of servings of superfoods inside of it. There's over 11 superfoods for a reset in the body and feeling amazing. It takes just 30 seconds to, to mix it up and to drink it. It's less than $3 a day and uh, less than 3 grams of sugar as well. It helps promote a healthy uh, response to stress. It tastes delicious in just plain water. You don't need a blender or anything. It encourages the feeling of healthiness and productivity at work or with your loved ones. So it's also something I use as a pick-me-up if I'm a little bit tired after doing a whole bunch of work or something like that. But in general, uh, it's a way of getting a lot of superfoods in all at once. And uh, I've had so many benefits of using the High Five supplement brand of Organifi. So right now, 
You can also get 15% off. All you do is you go to uh, www.organifi.com forward slash Aaron 15. And they're specifically giving my audience 15% off an order of whatever you want. You get the, the protein is amazing. is vegan protein that digests well because there's enzymes in it all the way to the gold tea, which I drink at night, which helps with amazing sleep. And then the green juice, which I use for energy. And you just go get 15% off for my audience right now. It's also a way of supporting the podcast and uh, helping me keep going here on the podcast. So with that, it's www.organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com c o m forward slash aaron fifteen a a r o n one five use the code you see at the top get fifteen percent off and use Organifi green juice give up coffee just try it out for a week and uh, I promise you your energy will be different and it's just so good to give up coffee too I think it speeds it coffee has caffeine which speeds you up energetically I literally think that is what I've heard caffeine speeds up the biorhythms of the body so it literally makes you age faster. So if you, it's like an energetic age in a way, and you're, so you're winding yourself up. But if you get rid of caffeine and you use something like green juice, there's much more benefits and there's less, less side effects. So, and you're going to age well. You're going to be like 50, 60 years old looking sexy as fuck. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to the rest of this episode, right? Meow. Having a magnetic frame means that reality literally molds to your own energy. And it's about understanding that the way you feel about you is projected out into the world. Other people are responding to you based on the energy you're putting out. But if you're putting out what is called a weak frame, then what happens is you end up falling into everyone else's frame. So this is the key to really having magnetic energy. This is the key to understanding uh, if you feel like, in a way, you aren't showing up as powerfully as you would like in the world. And a lot of this has to do with understanding frame and also dynamics and relationships. What is your own frame? And in general, you could also say that a frame, in a way, is a set of values or beliefs about yourself that you are subconsciously or consciously projecting out to other people. Now, for the year of 2020 for me, this has been a massive year of me stepping into my old frame. Me stepping into my, no, me stepping into my own, yeah, my own frame and realizing that my old frame had me showing up in a way that not wasn't necessarily authentic, But what I was doing is I was showing up and I was feeling more safe by being a part of other people's frame. And this is something that was a shadow side of myself as well that I want to share with you. But in general, uh, the way that I've come to understand this is by understanding how I'm showing up in the world, understanding how I'm interacting with other people. And it's been very interesting because as I look to my life and how I've set up my life. You know, this is the, this is the funny thing about the whole situation. A lot of this also deal goes down and boils down to your own self image. How do you view yourself? Because what I realized is a lot of the way I viewed myself wasn't congruent to honestly how a lot of people view me and not that that matters, but I was seeing something. I was not able to see something about myself that other people saw was so obvious about me. And me coming into that power in this year has been extremely pivotal. So uh, first off, let's talk about for a second, having a magnetic frame. What does that mean? Having a magnetic frame means that the way you view yourself and the way that you're showing up in the world and the way that you feel about yourself, the way you think about yourself, that that's in a high standard or in a high light, not better than other people necessarily. It's not like a comparison thing, but it means that you have a lot of self-worth there, but not just that there's an attack. There's a aspect of your own magnetic frame as well, where you're not attached to outcome. When I look at myself at the beginning of this year, when I talk about dating or something like that, you know, I was moving out of a relationship. I could see that there were this old pattern that I had inside of myself where I was like dependent on outcome. And the more I've done my own shadow work, the more I've gone within myself, the less attached to outcome I've become, the more I've just felt good about who I am and not cared what really happens 
as a result of my own actions or whether that's dating or whether that's just in life in general. And as I've let go of outcome, it's very interesting because then it's almost like my energy is more freedom giving. It's in a way more, um, more pure or more authentic. And then funny enough, it's like people find that more attractive. So if we're attached to outcome, what that means is my frame is dependent on your energy. So if you go on a date with somebody, for example, and you guys are going out and you are caring what they think about you and you're, you're wanting their validation, you're wanting them to affirm or laugh at your jokes. Then what that means is it means in a way my frame is sort of weak. And if you were to give me something, see, that's the thing as well. That frame is saying, please give me something. If you give me something, then I will feel worthy, whole and complete. But if you're unattached and you don't care what someone else thinks and you're in abundance because you realize there's so many people out there in the world, but you feel so good about yourself, you're just being yourself authentically. Then what you'll find is that then your energy is more magnetic energy anyways, but you're also more free to be yourself. It's funny because in dating, they say like the key is to be yourself, but sometimes people are asking, well, who is, who is myself? Am I, am I this awkward person? No, it's just that the awkwardness, a lot of times, if someone feels awkward, it's because they have these filters about who they can or can't be in reality. And therefore their frame that they are projecting out is like a filtered through frame that's not allowing you to be authentic. So when we talk about, you know, here's another thing though I want to mention about frame control. We talk about control, you know, that's a lot of times used in psychology. You know, whoever has the more dominant frame is like controlling the conversation. Control though, what I've realized is a form of fear. If we need to control things in our life, It means we fear the unknown. It means we fear the outcome of things without us as an ego controlling things, which in a way takes a lot of the magic out of love. Because imagine if you're trying to control some type of love relationship. Wow, that's a big bird. (laughs) We have this huge bird that just landed on top of this tree outside. It's huge. Yeah, anyways. Frame control though, and just in general with this process, if we're trying like love and, and intimacy, you can't really control that. If you're trying to control someone else, that one comes off as a form of manipulation, but also it, it's like almost like you, you fear they're not going to love you. You fear it's not going to happen the way you want. And because of that fear, you're projecting that energy out and it comes off as probably insecurity to the person. Cause remember people feel what you feel and energy is magnetic. So, This year for me has been very much a metaphor and analogy for me coming in my own frame. I've had this epiphany maybe three or four times this year. One of the most powerful ones, honestly, was moving out of that relationship. I was in a relationship for a year last year. And um, what I realized is that my own energy, I felt safe and in a way like the certainty that, oh, this relationship that may not be working, that maybe eventually something happens. There was a, uh, I was holding on to it and it was challenging for me to let it go in the beginning of the year because I was rationalizing it so much. I was rationalizing wanting, um, like, like, and it's funny. It's a funny thing really when I look back at it because in the beginning of the breakup of that relationship, we both really wanted to get, you know, we're still great friends by the way. Um, many of you probably know who this person is, but we broke apart. We were both on board. We both wanted space. And then after that, it was like, I don't even know what it was, but something kind of shifted. And when something shifted, it was like, I started going into my shadow and it was challenging for me to let it go. But what I realized it was the big epiphany that I had was the reason it was hard to let go was because I wouldn't let go of the old meaning I was giving to this person. I wasn't looking within myself and realizing that I was already whole and complete. It was almost like I was assuming that this happiness, this deep spiritual connection that I was rationalizing was in this other person and not within myself. And when I look back at it, it's very obvious to see. And what I've realized is letting go is actually not hard. Remember, having a magnetic frame, part of that is being able to not be attached. Letting go is not actually hard. What is hard 
is making the choice to let go of the old meaning that you give to someone else. It's almost like part of my identity was put inside of someone else because this someone else I had a deep spiritual connection with and that deep spiritual connection, I, I wasn't seen within my own self. So I was also assuming like, oh, well, if we, if we part ways, then that deep spiritual connection I may not have, or almost, I never had a deep spiritual connection. And I I always say those words. It's funny. Um, cause it connections also within ourselves, but basically the girlfriends that I've had in the past, it wasn't ever a really deep spiritual connection. It was mainly more surface many times, you know, there's just different aspects of it. But as I went through my spiritual awakening, it was the first real relationship I had since my spiritual awakening. That was like a deep spiritual connection. And what happened is because it was like the only one like that. I started to associate that with that, you know, with that person instead of realizing that's within myself. But what I realized as well is that it was almost like I was afraid to go into my own frame of being in my own energy and, and really disconnecting from that and letting go of that. And once I let go of that, I started to feel more free than ever. My energy became much more magnetic because I wasn't attached to outcome. That person and I are still great friends. But it was about me really going within myself in a way, what they call this, you know, I have like a shadow work coach is I was literally like a teenager becoming a man and having my own sense of gravity. I realized that even in, even in relationship, I was kind of molding my frame to make other people happy, whether that's friendships or even that love relationship. I was like, oh, well we could do this or was some level of anxious attachment, I believe, that stemmed from childhood for sure and a sense of not feeling worthy. If you want more information on that, I have a whole series on anxious and avoidant attachment styles. And once I became aware of that, so much of my life changed because I started to really let go. The other big epiphany for me in the relationship sector when it comes to frame control was huge epiphany. I realized that by me trying to control the way somebody else responded to me, I was literally robbing them of making the choice to choose me. Does that make sense? So if you want someone to text you or to respond to you in a certain way, and you are trying to get them to do that energetically, you're in a way hijacking their energy and trying to manipulate them. And what happens is people are very intuitive and they can feel when you want something from someone else. So what happens is they end up putting up a wall. They end up putting up an energetic block and they won't give you what you want because energetically they can feel that manipulation. It's an energetic thing. So if you were to want a compliment from somebody else and you just bought this new shirt and you go out in a public and you're waiting for people to give you a compliment. Many times people will not give you that compliment because they can almost feel that resistance within your own energy and it like blocks them from seeing it and you're trying to manipulate them and maybe they can feel that. But if you were to completely let go of the outcome, not even care one way or the other and just go out there and be yourself, you'll find sometimes maybe you get 20 compliments in one day about it. It's interesting the way that it works. I used to also use this when I worked at that nine to five job selling women's shoes, when I would greet customers, you could hear in my voice if I wanted some form of validation or if I wanted something from them. For example, I'd be like, you know, I greeted thousands of people a day. I'd say, hello, how are you? Now, if I was like, hey, how you doing? And you could feel that energy at the end of my voice, like, hey, you gonna say hi to me? Are you gonna um, validate me? You could feel that neediness and they could feel that. And a lot of times you wouldn't get that great. You'd get some people say hi, but it wasn't like a real heart. Well, me like a heartfelt interaction. However, once I learned how to really detach from the outcome, I'd say something like, Hey, how you doing? There's no, hi, give me less validation. Hello. How are you? And then it's like a, a presence there. I think a lot of frame control as well is, just being present. 
But I, I noticed that just working that nine to five job. And the more I was detached from the outcome, even when I was helping customers, if I was not attached to whether they bought or not, it normally worked in my favor. If I was attached to whether they bought or not, it normally didn't work in my favor. Attachment equals resistance and people can feel resistance. So when we're talking about frame control, understand that this is mainly about understanding how you are showing up for you. And are you doing what you want to do for a living? Are you calling, like it, really frame is about understanding your own rules to reality and what you believe about reality. And do you let other people dictate what you feel about you? Do you let other people dictate what you feel about other people? You see? So it's really becoming clear as to who you are. And control is at level of fear. So it's not like you have to control the frame, but it just means you have to be in your own frame. Be in your own frame. And this also gets back to a lot of the content that I share with, are you doing things because of what it'll get you? Or are you doing things because it's who you are? Identity shapes our life. Identity shapes our reality. If you are doing something to get something, then you are doing something that is a means to an end. If you are being a specific way because it's who you choose to be, you'll find that that is an end result of itself. You are then present to the moment. So a lot of frame has to do with understanding, are you present to the moment? The analogy I use for this too is I used to, uh, when I was making daily videos on YouTube, working my nine to five job, wanting to make the transition into doing YouTube full time, I wasn't making daily videos because if I made a certain amount of videos, then I could go full time, even though maybe that was a side effect. I was making daily videos because I already saw myself as a full-time YouTuber and I was being who I preferred to be. They tell you a lot of times too, if your intention is to get onto YouTube, to become uh, well-known or for significance, to get subscribers, a lot of times it won't work out. But if you get on YouTube because it's what you're passionate about and you want to express things out into the world and you want to help other people or something like that, that's different. You're doing it because of the passion. You're leading with that passion. It's an end of itself. That's the difference. When you look at someone like, uh, you know, even vloggers like David Dobrik, for example, big vlogger, 10, 20 million followers on Insta on uh, YouTube. He makes these like short little vlogs, four minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> used to watch a lot of his videos and um, very entertaining to watch. It's almost like the younger version of friends in a way, but like real life stuff. Um, for the most part, but, but he was super passionate about being a filmmaker and he was doing it cause he was passionate about it. He came from Vine. Very interesting to see, but, but what I've realized more than anything is different aspects of my own shadow when it comes to frame and what feels safe. And here's what I realized about my own childhood. And here's what I want you to, to, to do to really go within here and to see the deeper parts of yourself, go in and see when you were a kid. Did you feel safe in your own frame? When you were a kid, did you feel safe in your parents' frame? Remember, a frame is like a belief system. It's like a, did you feel safe in your own energy? Did you feel safe in your parents' energy? Did you call the rules for your life or, or feel comfortable with yourself? Or did your parents control everything about you? Many of you know my story, but I'm going to explain how this has affected my own relationships. So for example... My, you, many of you know my story of my ex-stepmom between the ages of 7 to 16 years old. During that time, my brother and I had pretty much zero freedom. We weren't allowed to have friends. We weren't allowed to watch TV. We had to earn going to school. We were normally working outside every day. We were giving, you know, doing yard work. A lot of times locked out of the house when uh, my ex-stepmom and my dad weren't home. Um, we were given a bowl of cereal in the morning, TV dinner at night. We were very malnourished, weren't allowed to have second helpings of much and you know, when my dad divorced my ex-stepmom when I was 16, 17 years old, it was like a whole new world. We're allowed to eat the kind of food we want. We're allowed to have friends. We're allowed to like watch TV. We're allowed to play video games. It was like a whole new level of freedom. But one thing that I realized, and I was talking to my buddy about this, and he made me aware of this. Women that I'm attracted to tend to have a strong frame. What I mean by that is they have their own strong frame and, and can be somewhat controlling be somewhat controlling. You know, after my dad divorced my ex-stepmom, and my stepmom had a very strong frame. She's a narcissist. And here's the crazy thing. I remember this very clearly. It's going to sound kind of crazy. I think there's a name for it. Maybe it's called Stockholm Syndrome. 
I forget. But after my dad divorced my ex-stepmom, I remember going outside. We were like grabbing our stuff from like one of the houses. Like my dad, we moved out of like this house that we lived in and we were like grabbing stuff. And I had this, this memory that even though my brother and I had to sneak food, even, more, even though my brother and I had to like sneak trying to watch TV and what we do is one of us would be on the lookout by the window what, and, then the, and then would have like the, the, the remote with the finger on the previous channel button so that we could go to the previous channel and then turn off the TV and bolt out the door if we saw someone pull up in the driveway. Even though we had to live like that and there was a lot of control, manipulation, physical, emotional abuse, there was something about it that felt safe. And after the divorce, there was something about the uncertainty of the world that felt kind of unsafe. And I remember that feeling. Well, thankfully, guess what I did? I recreated that same wanting to feel safe in other people's frame many, many times in my own life. And one of the ways I did that is my first girlfriend was very jealous. And she was always trying to control me. Just like my ex-stepmom would control me and my, my brother and I. In a different way, of course, she wasn't, that girlfriend wasn't physically or abusive, but she was like very insecure, very jealous. A lot of narcissists, by the way, they're very insecure. That's why they have to control everything so much. So what happened is I had, this is what I realized, the epiphany had. Pretty much every woman I've dated and been in somewhat of a long-term relationship with, you know, anything over like a year, has been somebody with a strong frame. Not, and not, I don't mean like a masculine, like a woman with masculine energy, but it, sometimes maybe a little bit more of an edge. But the woman that I, like, I've realized, and here's the interesting thing. It's almost like recreating that comfort that I felt with the ex-stepmom. Recre it's been re recreated in many different relationships. And what I realized is I've had this tendency to fall into other people's frame because I haven't felt safe in my own frame. Huge epiphany that I had just a couple weeks ago. And as I've been, because this year for me has been almost like my own warrior's initiation. A lot of myself even questioned, was questioning my own energy. Like, am I, you know, for, because of different situations in my life. It's made me question my own energy of like, how much of a leader am I? You know, this whole year for me has been like a lot of getting clarity with the mission and what I'm doing in the world, rebranding, all this stuff. And it's made me kind of question like, you know, and what basically what happened though is I've been going into my own masculinity and realizing that I had this almost block because I don't think I ever had a really a strong masculine role model growing up because even my dad was feeling safe. Man, this makes a lot of sense as I'm talking through it right now. My grandma, so my dad's mom, has a strong frame. Can be pretty controlling and very high energy maintenance, like high maintenance energy. So what my dad did is my dad recreated that with my ex-stepmom. And then, because my ex-stepmom was controlling my brother and I's life, we recreated it in our relationships. Even my brother, I can see how he's been in relationships where the woman had a strong frame. Meaning she could be controlling, she's like leading the way in a way. And that's a shadow. Even for me, what I'm realizing is I'm going within myself and I am establishing my own frame within myself. Now, this doesn't mean I'm controlling things and like, no, I won't you know, like be like this or do this or like be more demanding. It means I'm just becoming very comfortable with my own frame and I'm becoming also uncomfortable with the unknown and I'm not attached to the outcome. So for me, what I've been learning to do is to be in my own frame and to really decide what do I want? And as I've put different people off a pedestal, you know, having a magnetic frame means you're not putting people on pedestals. I've put my, ex, you know, certain like, you know, ex-girlfriends on pedestals. And I'm, I'm like realizing now my own sense of self-worth and that I can be detached from outcome. I can be detached from what other people do. And it's so empowering. But not only that, what I'm realizing 
is that a lot of the ways that I wasn't seeing myself, it was almost just because I wasn't seeing myself a certain way, therefore I wasn't naturally embodying it. What I realized within myself is I actually have a strong amount of masculine energy. And for me to get, you know, a lot of it was my, my coach has been helping me understand this because I think I, I, I didn't, because I didn't have that growing up for my dad necessarily like that role model because he was playing a part of my ex stepmom's frame. I think I didn't have that role model to, to really be that myself. However, what I've realized is like for me to be where I'm at, it requires an insane amount of like strong masculine energy for me to, to have the, tenacity and the willpower to make videos every single day on YouTube until like I'm not in a nine to five job anymore and to be able to lead people into understanding more about who they are. You know, I think I, and I, ex I exude a certain amount or I, um, elude or what do you call that I exhibit or show quite a bit amount of certainty energy when I'm expressing myself on camera. And that's why people feel comfortable that, that listen to me is because I, I say things with confidence and confidence really is trust. And I think I have a lot of that. And I can see that now though, like that I naturally have that. And, and I've been getting reflections of that because people are like, oh yeah, well, you're a very, you know, you have a very strong masculine presence. And I'm like, oh yeah. I think what it is, I just, some of my friends also have a very strong masculine presence. So when I'm around them, sometimes it's like this frame thing. It's very interesting. And that kind of even brings it down to this house that I'm living in I live with a friend of mine who has a very strong masculine frame. His name's drew. Many of you guys know him. Owns a huge company. And I moved into this house. One of the reasons was because I think I didn't feel safe getting my, like, it's almost like I felt more comfortable doing that because I was doing it with someone else with someone else's frame as well. So what I realized is that that was part of my own shadow. And what I did is I really recently just bought a new house in Sedona, my own. And I realized that one of the reasons I need my own space, my own energy is because I have a strong frame and I can feel safe in my own frame. And as I do, I'm, I'm there's this new energy about me. It's like, I'm creating life on my terms now. And I'm not trying to become so a part of someone else's frame, even when it like in like love dating relationships sector of my life, I don't want to be a part of someone. It doesn't mean that I can't step into the unknown or let go of outcome. And I'm trying to just control my own frame. And, and it's like this narcissistic energy. It just means like, I'm totally good with my own energy. And I have a certain level of gravity and this is why boundaries is good. I have boundaries. What's okay. What's not okay. And I'm really starting to find out what I do and don't like. And I realized that what I thought I liked before was an old pattern that I was feeling attached to because it felt safe, like just like the old ex stepmom situation of that safetyness. So it's very interesting because now I'm realizing that every girl that I've attracted in the past has had a strong frame. I'm like, do I even want that? Or do I want to be in my, it's almost a shadow aspect of myself that was becoming part of other people's frame. And now what I'm realizing is as I become more safe with my own frame by, by creating it, you know, I'm like traveling, doing what I want. I'm, um, getting my own house. Literally it's being remodeled right now as we speak. And in a couple of weeks I move in, which I'm very excited about. And, uh, I'm just, I'm creating life on my own terms by making choices about who I am and I'm doing and being the way that I want because I choose to be this way. Not because of the, it's like, it's a, it's an end of itself. That's what's important to understand. Is, are you doing things that are a means to an end or are you doing things that are an end of itself? That's what makes all the difference in this. So the other aspect of this I wanted to talk about real quick and how you can go about learning this is become aware of your own frame and become aware of your frame growing up. Did you feel safe in your parents' frame or did you not feel safe in your parents' frame? Did you feel safe in your own frame or did you not? And did it feel more safe for you to become part of someone else's? Because what you'll find is as you do the shadow work with this, and as you start to feel more safe within yourself, you start to exude that energy out and people feel what you feel. And because of that, it's important to understand how you feel about you. And feeling is generated from belief, from meaning. Do you give your own perspective meaning over what people think of you? And the funny thing is, when you talk about insecurities, if you feel insecure about yourself in a certain way, 
then you're exuding that out and other people may feel that about you, but it's only because you've, in a way, exuded that out of your own energy. So if you become completely embracive of your own insecurities, then guess what? The energy that you're putting out is then of confidence or of acceptance of it at least, and then other people accept it about you. So this is something that we can all begin to go within to, to, to realize. But the other aspect I wanted to talk about this is understanding your own boundaries. If you say yes to everything, then when you're saying yes to things that don't really resonate with you or you don't really want to say yes to, you're saying no to yourself. So remember that. If you say yes to something or to doing, and think about this too. There's a ripple out effect of this. Imagine you and your friends are going out. And your friends say, hey, let's go out. Let's go to this club. Let's go do this thing. And you really want to stay at home. You really don't want to go out. But imagine that because you become a part of their frame, because you're afraid of what they're going to think, you decide to go out. And imagine that when you go out and you're at the club or you're wherever and you don't really want to be there, imagine then your friends have to energetically take care of you. Is everything okay? They, they, they could tell that you're not showing up powerfully because you don't really want to be there. So what happens is they're then exuding their energy to make you happy, even though they may have pressured you into coming. But what ends up happening is a depletion of energy. And it ripples out because then they, their energy is more depleted. So it ripples out to your other friends, to your other people. So maybe going out and maybe having your own boundaries was the most powerful thing you could do because then you're not bringing yourself with you to where you're feeling like you can't show up powerfully. When you really wanted to stay at home and read and take a bath and take care of yourself. So this ripples out in many other areas of your life. So boundaries are a good thing. And don't feel, don't feel like you have to apologize about it, you know. A couple months ago, there's a skunk in the backyard and the dogs, there are two dogs, Sage and Jonah, went barking at the skunk. Ruff, 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 ruff. And the skunk sprayed them. And it smelled like shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> the whole house smelled like shit for like three days. We had to go buy this special shampoo. And what happened, and it, it was a very strong metaphor for boundaries the skunk you get too close to the skunk and the skunk doesn't want you around it'll spray you you think the skunk feels guilty about that no you've crossed the boundary you've crossed the dogs cross that energetic boundary for the skunk but it's a metaphor for boundaries what better animal to show you boundaries than the skunk now in the same way realize that when you have a strong frame you're going to have more boundaries I developed a strong frame when I started making daily videos on YouTube and I had to say no to friends that wanted to hang out. I had to say no to a lot of things so that I could say yes to making videos daily on YouTube. I had to make a video every day, edit a video every day, uh, make a thumbnail every day, do the optimization every day, every single day. And I was working a nine to five job selling women's shoes. But what I had to do is I had to stay committed to that vision. If I would have said no here and there and then started hanging out with friends, my frame would have deflated and I may not be speaking in front of you right now doing what I love full time. So one of the biggest lessons I can give you is to realize and not feel guilty about your own boundaries, but also to be aware of your own frame and to go back to your child and be aware of that frame and, and realize that you might, you know, I already have a strong frame. I know that now I, I can look to many other areas of my life and see that strong frame. I think what was happening though is I had a strong frame in like every area of my life, but my relationships. And now I'm like able to see, oh, it's very obvious. All I got to do is move this energy over here. It's going to have more boundaries of like, even when I'm like dating, for example, I'm realizing that I'm just being myself and I'm not attached to the outcome. And because of that, my energy is very different than it used to be when I was attached to things and I was caring what other people thought. But also I realize my own sense of worthiness and gratitude for myself and the lifestyle that I've created for myself. And there's a level of confidence with that. I want to prove myself. But it's, it's a frame that's already there. You're, you're, you probably realize that a lot of what you're going to be working through is realizing your frame's already strong. It's just what are your beliefs about yourself? How do you view yourself? And can you get to the core of your own frame and realize that if you didn't feel safe when you were growing up, then maybe you felt more safe in someone else's frame. 
And even now, as I'm getting my own house, as I'm traveling the world, as I'm doing what I want, when I want to do it, as I'm setting my own boundaries for the kind of relationships that I want in my life, as, as I'm doing all these things, I'm creating this like gravity in my life that is very powerful. And 2020 will always be the year of me coming in my own frame. And 2021 will be a year of embodiment, embodying that frame more than ever, embodying a level of mastery that prior I haven't stepped into completely yet, but will. And uh, it's very exciting. You know, it's funny, even when I look at my own frame, I used to go to a lot of like psychics or clairvoyance or tarot readers or astrology. And I used to do a lot of these things because I was looking for outside validation. I haven't had any of those readings in like two, two months now. Why? Because I feel so safe in my own energy. I feel so excited to create what I want in life. I don't need outside confirmation of any of this. It doesn't mean I'll never do it again or I'll never have a reading. But it means that I don't need it. My frame is strong enough. And me being the way that I prefer to be is just trusting the unknown of the universe, not needing to know everything. Not needing to know what's around the corner. It's very powerful. So, let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I know this episode was a little bit different. It was kind of just an authentic expression of a new idea of the frame, magnetic frame. Realize your magnetic frame is a one part non-attachment, not being attached to outcome, doing and being the way you prefer to be because it's who you are. And then it's, it's leading in your own life and deciding who you are and how you feel about you, doing the inner self-image work. I have a whole podcast episode on self-image that I think is very powerful that I think you'll like. That will help with this as well. And then also I have episodes on boundaries if you want to go more deeper on that. But this is the shadow work I've been doing for 2020. It's been extremely powerful. 2021 this year is going to be all about embodiment for me, and I'm so excited about it. So with that, hope you guys enjoy this episode. And as always, I will talk to you guys on the next one. Peace, much love, and namaste.